Hello everybody, welcome to the IMIT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, we are cracking on with AVD at the moment. We've already covered Microsoft uh, Cloud PC, uh, Windows 360, or Windows 365, whatever you want to call it. We've also covered Microsoft DevBox as well. So uh, AVD makes a sort of trifecta of uh, Microsoft Cloud VDI sort of solutions. Um, and hopefully you've got an idea of what each server, you know, what each solution is and, and the sort of use cases and where it might fit in your organization. And hopefully you're going to get that from the AVD part of it as well. So we kind of talked about service architecture in the last episode. We did a bit of a demo on creating an image. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So as I mentioned, this is a Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, and we're actually going to do start talking about AVD um, supported identity now. Uh, so again, multiple parts to, to this sort of topic. Um, so from an identity perspective, we'll start off by talking about on-premises identity. We're going to cover hybrid identity and then cloud-only identity. And then, as I said, in the last demo, we created an image. We're actually going to deploy some VMs to our host pool in the, in the demo today. Uh, so let's start by talking about on-premises identity. So um, AVD supports different types of identities, um, depending on which sort of uh, configuration you're going to choose. Uh, and hopefully in this little section, we're going to kind of try and go through some of those. Um, so since users must be sort of discoverable through Microsoft Entra ID to access AVD, user identities that exist only in Active Directory domain services are not supported. This includes standalone Active Directory deployments with um, Active Directory federated services, or ADFS, as well. Um, so we're talking about hybrid now. So as your virtual desktop supports hybrid entities through Entra ID, including those federated using ADFS. You can manage these user identities in AD domain services and sync them to Entra ID using Microsoft Entra Connect. You can also use Microsoft Entra ID to manage identities and sync them to the Entra um, domain services as well. So uh, Microsoft Entra domain services is like the domain service or domain controller as a service. Um, which is, is, is cloud um, cloud native. When accessing AVD using hybrid entities, sometimes the user principal, the UPN, the user principal name UPN, or security identifier, the SID, for the for the user in Active Directory and Microsoft Entra might not match. Uh, give give an example. You know the, the AD account, say user at imitgeek.local, may correspond to user at imitgeek.com in Microsoft Entra ID. AVD only supports this type of configuration if either the UPN or SID um, for both of your AD and Entra ID accounts match. So the SID refers to the user object property object SID in Active Directory and uh, the on-premises security identifier in Microsoft Entra ID as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about now cloud identity, then we'll move into the demo. So as your virtual desktop supports cloud on the identities when using Microsoft Entra uh, joint VMs. And these users are created and managed directly in Microsoft Entra ID. Um, so there's no need for ADDS and no need for Entra Connect Sync, none of that. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, you can get really good integration with um, the it's kind of built-in integration with things like Intune and things like that as well. So um, again, if you go through the configuration, um, when you when you're doing sort of cloud only, you can you can kind of onboard them into uh, Intune. Okay, so uh, a bit of a short episode there, a bit of short theory. Yeah, we do have more information around identity uh, for AVD in the next episode as well. But um, now we're going to actually create uh, some VMs in our session host. So please join me in the demo. Okay, so here we are in the Azure portal. We're going to go to AVD. So we did our image in the last um, last demo. <laughs> it's a host. We've got our demo HP here. And we see we've got no virtual machines as of yet. We'll take a look at those later, don't worry, the, the sort of settings. So here's where we want to add a virtual machine. So I'll click on add. Um, now I was hoping this, this would come up. So you need to make sure you've got registration. If, you, if you're adding VMs after and not as part of the configuration when you first set up the host pool, you need to have a registration key. You must set up this up before you can add any new VMs to the host pool. So, We'll just quickly do this, just generate the key. Um, just give it a date here. Uh, I'll just go for April 25th, for April uh, 10th, 2025. One minute, it's not right. May the 10th, my bad. <laughs> uh, click on OK. 
I mean, you can obviously use this and, and download this key if you need. So I can just make a download of that. Okay. Let's refresh that. Click on add. And now we've created that key, so let's go further. Okay, so perfect. Now, um, again, because we're adding the VM after the fact, um, a lot of this will be grayed out because we, we can't change it. We can't change the region. We can't change the host pool name. We can't change the location, the resource group, anything like that. It's got to be a pooled, um, again, because that's the type of a uh, multi-session host pool. Um, so again, just we, we can't change any of this because we've already kind of selected it. So virtual machines. Um, so again, resource group, we can change if we want. But we're going to leave it as it is. So uh, demo AVD, put demo AVD, and then what will happen is it'll have a, a hyphen and a number afterwards. Um, so again, we've got the option of the virtual machine type. Do we want Azure Virtual Machine or do we want Azure Local Virtual Machine? Now again, we're not doing Azure Virtual, you know, Azure Local VM. Azure Local is outside, uh, I suppose, the scope of this, what I'm doing. I might kind of talk a little bit about the support in a later video. And to be fair, I've got some content on that already, which I'll put the link in the description. Um, so again, just going to leave everything on default uh, that I can. Apart from everything that needs changing, we'll put some zone one there. Again, let's go standard VM. Um, that's changed. Let's go back to the yep. So I want standard. Now go to see all images. We want to go to my images. Um, oh, let's go to shared images. There we go. Now we should see the Windows 10 MS demo. So that was Windows Wind. No, that is Wind. Wind 10 MS demo. That's what we created. Okay. So I'm going to select that. Again, we can look at the sort of VM size. I'm just going to change size again, just for the, the purpose of the. Um, demo, I'm just going to go cheap and cheerful. Uh, let's go B series. Uh, and let's go, there we go, we'll go to uh, CPU and 4 gig of RAM. Uh, let's select that. Number of VMs, again, for the purpose of this, we're just going to go 1 VM. Leave it standard, let's leave it disabled boot diagnostics, again, just for the purpose of VM. Um, and we're just going to leave it in the, the virtual network that's in this uh, resource group. No public ports, leave it on basic security. Um, now, again, this is if you want to create a hybrid. We're just going to go with Ontra ID, but if you wanted hybrid, we have to put in all the domain information there. But for the purpose of the demo, we're just going to go hybrid. Now, this is open and roll it with Intune. We do want to do that because we want to use all that cool management stuff and look at the capabilities later on in the in the series. Um, okay, so we need a local admin account. Um, let's just go, let's call it demo admin. This is if we ever need to manage it. Uh, let's give it a U password. Okay, make sure they match again. Leave everything else blank. Go to tags, review and create. This is where we're going to create the VM in our host pool. So once that's fully validated, I can click, click on create. Um, so this is essentially all I want to show. This is how you can add a VM after the fact. And then we're going to build on top of this by uh, creating a remote application as well. Just click on create there. Um, so that's the demo done. We are moving, moving nicely with, with the demos. Um, again, we have, do have some theoretical episodes where there won't be any demos, but there, there won't be too many of those. Um, so we kind of touched on identity in this episode. We're going to continue with the identity discussion in the next episode as well. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, goodbye.